So, Bob, how, how long have you been holding that version of the 131, and how effective was it for you trying to close that out? Yeah, we, we spent two days, just a small part of two days on it. Larry, Larry said, uh, I don't know, last week, maybe we ought to bring a 131 out. And we were playing point drop, and it hadn't helped us any. It's just, I figured, you know, nobody's seen it for two or three years, so give it a shot. And I think we got the personnel to do it. DC on top of it is really good because he's so long and he's hard to he's hard to pass around or see over. And uh, Gabe just eats everything up in the middle. I mean, if you drive it to the middle, he's going to stop it. So it was uh, seemed like the right thing to do. Did it work like you wanted it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they didn't get good shots. They get, they, get, they got the problem with it is you get you get more than one, but we we'll try to fix that as best we can. Coach, I wonder if you could take me through. Gabe earlier in the second half shoots a three pointer for really no good reason. You bring him out, and then you know later on in the game he comes up with the key offensive rebound in the game. I mean, is that kind of the highs and lows that? Can happen in one game over the course of you know, ten minutes or so. Uh, I'm not sure I can say what I want to say. <laughs> he knows better than to shoot the three. I mean, he was. I think he was frustrated. He was. Well, I think one, he was tired. Two, he was frustrated because he had just missed two free throws. And then we're dumb enough to throw the ball to him, not, not thinking he might not. He might shoot it. So. Uh, yeah, he knows better than that. I mean, if you're going to shoot that, shoot it when we're, you know, we're playing somebody and we're up 30. And then let me take you out. I'm still going to take you out. <laughs> but, I mean, he forgets about it, right? I mean, he <coughs> comes back, makes the offensive rebound of the game. <laughs> Justin, please don't ask me to get inside his head. <laughs> okay. It looked like he had some success. I don't know what you call it, but it was kind of like a double post. You had one person posted, the second person kind of curled, posted off of him. A hand there, was that something you thought would work well against them or something you've been looking at with your personnel? I've ran it since Walsh. Yeah. And Taz is a good guy to run it. He reads the defense pretty well. And it's great to have Sean coming off of there because if they don't really pay attention to Sean, he's apt to make a three. Bob, to follow up with what Justin asked, the players all said that Gabe's offensive rebound on the missed foul shot was the play of the game in, in their opinion. You? It was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Uh, Gabe made a lot of plays. Taz made a lot of plays. And a lot of those guys made plays. Um, but yeah, I think it shocked everybody that we kept going up there and missing. They figured one of them may go in. Maybe they bank one or something. But. Yeah, I mean he's good at that. He's good at keeping keeping balls alive. Bob, the personnel in the one three one. I don't think that point guard. Yeah, Kitty was in the back. Kitty, Kitty was in the back, and then and then at the end we we put Taz back there for more size. Taz was Taz was back in the was the, the point guard's in the back. Point right. guard's always been in the I back. Taz was the point guard. Um, I was just curious. That's all. Kitty was back there the first time we did it, and then after the timeout, we put Taz back there because we needed more size. Was there any thought to fouling in the final seconds to defend them, or what's your kind of philosophy on that? Why? Why? So they can go make one, miss one, they, the way they offensive rebound it with their athletes? No, that didn't make any sense to me at all. Their athletes, all they, I mean, they're, so they're going to make one, they're going to miss one, and they're going to rebound it and sc score or maybe score and get fouled. That didn't make any sense. So many bad things happen. You can, I, say, I know that because I've done it for 40 years, and I've done some really stupid things like that, you know. And, and now I know better. I'm sorry. Surprised that it kind of turned into a Big East game with the way both teams have scored, especially UConn this year, that it turned into kind of the, you know, Defensive struggle, physical battle, low scoring. Have you watched? Have you watched Big Twelve games? <laughs> I mean that. 
it's not any different. I mean, when you have 10 athletes like that running around out there, there you're going to have contact. I mean, there's, there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to have contact. Um, I mean, the Big East maybe took it to a little extreme at, at times, but the Big 12 is physical. It's really physical. Coach, going back to Gabe, uh, can you just talk about how aggressive he was tonight down low? I mean, has he been showing that in practice? Or? We thought we had an advantage. I mean, we we, we thought that watching uh, watching their uh, Michigan State game, we thought Gabe could could be an advantage down there just because of his girth. I have an idea that you know a lot of coaches would like to see a game with sharp passing and good shooting and all that stuff. I got a hunch that you'd rather see a game like that, that, that you would like to play a backyard brawl game rather than a, rather than anything that's going to win an award for excellence. Well, I don't, I'm not sure why, Bob, but I think historically my teams have been that way. I mean, they've been they've been physical. Um, probably has something to do with the way we practice, I would guess, and probably the type of people we recruit. It tests, it tests you, but it probably tests the other team more, doesn't it, when you put them in a physical game, especially if they're not used to it? I don't, I've never been on that side. Never? <laughs> no, never been on that side. Coach Taz said that the free throws would be fixed. What do you say? There's only one way you fix them, and that's go in and work on them. And, uh, I think at least most of them will. You know, I mean, they've got the greatest facilities in America. I mean, they can, that place is open 24 7 for them. So, and there's two, four, six baskets in there. Confidence elevation standpoint versus win rate in terms of maybe you know top 15 team getting a win. It's probably it's probably half and half. I think I think our our older guys you know Taz, Sean, JB they're used to playing in games like this. Uh, Gabe, that that core of guys are used to it. I think maybe the guys coming from coming from the other schools, uh, they they probably haven't seen that kind of physicality, but they did today, so they they need to get used to it. It's probably going to be the way it is. Kind of interesting, coaching psychology here, going back to the free throws. When you shoot like that as a team. And lose, it's easy to go in the locker room after the game and yell and scream and get off. When you shoot like that and win, what's is there a difference? No. Okay. No. I didn't yell and scream, but I don't know if I would have yelled and screamed if we would have lost. You know, it's they know what they know what they got to do. It's it's not particularly those older guys. They know what they got to do. And and if they're going to be what they what they portrayed they were going to be, they'll get the rest of those guys in there. You know, I think the thing that that's been really good that we've done really good here over the years is our older guys have said, no, 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 you're you're going in the gym. You're not you're not hanging out here. You're going in the gym, and that's that's happened pretty much since I got here. I mean, I had a, I had a bunch of great guys to start with, and. I mean, my shoot, my teams at Cincinnati were always that way. We didn't always make them, but it wasn't because they didn't they didn't practice. And they don't have an excuse here. I mean, this is across the street over there is the best practice facility in America. They can they can they can go in there. And, that's like one stop shopping. You go in there and lift. You go you go get your shots up. You go get treated. You you know you've got the whatever that light bed thing that. For, for rehab, you've got you got everything, so should use it. Did you come into this game thinking you guys could hang with them on the boards like you did? Uh, I knew we had to be close. Right. 
I knew we had to be close. I think the good thing was they didn't get a whole lot of, of – they got a lot of rebounds, but they didn't get a lot of second-chance points. Perimeter shooting, can you guys take credit for some of that, all of that? I, I think we got much better. I did, you know, we had a, we were good, and then we had a stretch where we were standing on the side of them. It's hard to stop penetration when you're on the side of the guy, and that was pretty much our conversation at halftime. Was we got to stop being on the side? We got to get in front, whatever it takes, get back in front. It's hard to score through people. But if you got guys on your side, that's why, that's why we ran that duck in stuff for Taz and and, and Gabe. It puts guys on the side of them. Put guys on the side of them. You got to go through their body just to to get to the ball. Guarding guys on the rim as far as their shooting because they they came in shooting pretty well. And... When we stayed in front of them, it's hard to make shots over people. I mean, I don't care who you are. It's it's hard. It's hard to make shots over people. Uh, what do you uh, uh, when when Gabe went through that routine with the this two free throws of back turned on, on a pass and then uh, shooting a three, and you take them out. You know you're going to lead them you know, if it's a close game late in the game to play defense. What, what do you say to them to keep him from, you know, getting down or, or giving up or, or whatever? What do you say? I mean, you took him out of the game. I know you chatted with him a little bit. We've been he, – he's been, what, three years or maybe four? I don't know. I mean, he knows. He knows. He's – Gabe, believe it or not, is a pretty intelligent guy, and and, and uh, I mean he knows he 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 knows if he took another one of those, he'd probably never play again. So, <laughs> really said um, he kind of felt like his guys, well, I guess maybe beside Cole, kind of didn't know what to do offensively at times without the other two guys in there. Could you predict to that, or maybe lean into that at all, just to try to make it harder for other guys? Who... I don't I don't know that much about. Danny's team. I know their big guy who wasn't able to play is really good. He's really good. I mean, he's he's built like if you remember DeWan Blair. He's built like DeWan. He's he's bouncier, uh, but he's a I mean he's a big, wide, thick guy, and he everything he everything every jump hook he shoots seems like it goes in. Go back and look at look at who they've played, and I mean, he just he scores the ball. He scored the ball against Michigan State like they weren't there, and he's so he's so big and wide that you you have a hard time getting to the ball. He's a, he's he's a he's a huge difference for him. Could you see that kind of rudderless at times out there? Is that like a plan B or? Mm, I, I don't I don't know that I don't know that most coaches put a six foot ten. 290 pound guy at the head of the rudder. Uh, you know, he, he, he's usually the guy pulling the weight. Anything else? Yep.